What's up guys, it is your boy King Tynex here back with another video. Um I'm basically trying to do a different format here. Basically I'm trying to use my tablet instead of my phone to record because um space is space issues. And I've been having a bit of trouble when it comes on to like certain apps for my tablet. But it's whatever. Um so where did we last leave off? Oh yeah, basically when we last left off, Bakugo, Ida, and Todoroki, they all fought the hero killer stain in this what if, rather than Deku being part of them. He actually trained with Ryuku the whole time, learning to master this mid transformation. He had a bit of trouble gaining, he had a, he had a bit of trouble using it at first, being able to even activate it, but by the end, he was able to fully access that. When when they left after the after that sort of internship, what in, what ends up being interesting is when Deku uses it in combat. When All Might has them um, try and race each other to to get him first, well. Deku is actually able to morph into his half dragon form, which easily impresses the rest of the crap. Yeah, I was about to say crass. And which interests quite a bit of the class because of the fact that they have never seen Deku use this form before. They're used to him being in his big buff form and his full on dragon form. But they never expected there to be like some sort of mixture of the two. Some sort of... How should I say it? Some sort of fusion between these two. Like a mid-transformation. They weren't expecting him to be able to use that. Especially just so easily because they've just never seen him use it. And they thought that he couldn't use it because if he could... Why wouldn't he have all the other times? It just seemed pretty... Um, this form just seemed pretty convenient. So they're just looking at him in awe. Even All Might is in awe about this. Now most of the other, uh, most of the other events would remain similar to in canon. Except for when they have to fight All Might. Deku and Bakugo would be paired up against each other. Similar to in canon. Nothing really changes there. Uh, Bakugo would still refuse to want to, well, work with Izuku. Not because he views Izuku as weak or because of the fact that he was quirkless for most of his life, but because he wants to test his own strength against All Might. He wants to prove to Deku that he is above him. Obviously, <laughs> Bakugo isn't. Mbakugo is not strong enough to really combat All Might or Izuku. It's already been proven numerous times that he is just buying down more than he can chew. But Mbakugo is relentless in trying to become the number one hero. He wants to prove that he is the best, which is kind of admirable. That's something that Izuku acknowledges. He admits that, yeah. Bakugo is a bit of a joke, but his goals are remarkable. Like the fact that he's willing to go so far in order to, in order to actually, you know, reach his dreams, reach his goals. That's pretty admirable. But his attitude still needs to be worked on. All Might would just be completely. Crazy, he would just be trying to fight Izuku and Bakugo like in canon as well, basically trying to restrain them. But Izuku has none of that here, he's actually much stronger here. And because of the fact he's so much stronger, he's because of the fact that Izuku is so much stronger here, this doesn't face Izuku at all. He's actually really pumped to really fight All Might. And and some just leaving Bakugo behind. Bakugo is envious of Izuku's strength because he's just watching Izuku fight All Might. Izuku is going blow for blow against All Might, 
even the teachers are watching not just the teachers but the students as well they're all watching azuku and all my fight and their jaws just look their mouths are just hanging open at that point because azuku is literally going blow for blow against all might even if it's a restrained all might he's still fighting all might to a standstill which is no which is no easy accomplishment even a suppressed all might is strong enough to wipe away 80 percent of the criminals so they're really thinking just how strong is azuku especially since he isn't in his well dragon transformation He's not in any of those two transformations that he has. They still believe that he has a transformation quake. Um, they still they still believe that Azuku does have a transformation quake. Not that he is a reincarnation of a literal beast or something along those lines. I still don't know what Kaido is. Nobody nobody really understands how Azuku is so strong. They're all trying to figure this out throughout this whole fight that they're watching. Their fight gets so intense that, well, All Might's, All Might's bracelets actually break off. You know, those bracelets that were meant to restrain him, meant to suppress his strength. Yeah, those end up getting broken off and All Might doesn't even realize because, he's, because Deku is still going blow for blow against him. Daku doesn't realize either, well, he does realize that All Might's strength is actually increasing, but he's still able to keep up with All Might. He still hasn't reached his second transformation yet. Not second, but he still hasn't reached his, um, he still hasn't gone into his May transformation, his half dragon form. That's what he's going to call it. He's going to call this a half dragon form. He still hasn't reached into his half dragon form yet. He hasn't felt the need to because he sees that he is still relatively strong against All Might. He's still able to push his luck against All Might. Bakugou just watches in awe and anger because Azuku is just able to just go against All Might as if it's child's play. All Might is trying to get the one up on Izuku, but Izuku's movements are just too fast for All Might. Izuku is actually trying to pick up the pace here. He's getting excited. He's getting incredibly excited. He's getting so excited to the point where he's starting to lose himself in the fight. He's fighting against All Might. He's going blow for blow. He punches All Might in the face at one moment. Next thing you know, All Might punches Izuku in the face as well. But but only Azuku's punch had any real force, anything to really, anything to really hurt. It actually kind kind of broke All Might's jaw. All Might is just rubbing his jaw in pain, and he can't really talk right now. And he's just looking at Azuku, who is unfazed by his attack. Azuku just charges back in at All Might, and time is starting to run out though. You know, Bakugo realizes that okay, we still need to win this. Bakugo is probably the only one that's reasonable here. Bakugo is acting reasonable for once, and actually decides, you know what, we need to win this. So he just ends up going, and with All Might distracted with Azuku. He ends up going through the gate. He despises the fact that he had to go the easy way out, but it was the only way to win in this situation. This is incredibly uncharacteristic for Bakugo. And he vows that he will do better next time. This actually forces him to train even harder than in canon. He keeps on... He keeps on wanting to train. When it comes on to Azuku, he realizes that, okay, we already won. He realizes that Bakugo actually went through and went through the gate in order to really pass. And he actually thanks Bakugo for that, saying that, well, you did good work, 
You did good work, man. I applaud you for that. I applaud you for the fact that you decided to let go of your pride for once and do what was necessary to win. This is what Izuku would say to Bakugo after after they ended up going to the boot where to the booth where everybody was just watching Azuku fight all night. Everybody would just be staring at Azuku in amazement. But they wouldn't say a word. As a matter of fact, they they couldn't believe their eyes. The teachers wanted to have a talk with Azuku, but Azuku Azuku already left by the time they could even have a chance to reach him. When it came on to the mountain training, like, things would go absolutely different. Oh, heck no. Like, the very first thing is that, the very first thing that I would have to address is, well, the shopping mall incident. The shopping mall incident, that doesn't go the same as in canon because Izuku just keeps on walking. When Shigaraki tries to approach Izuku, he just can't. Izuku ends up and just being too tall for him to even grab. He's moving too fast. And Shigaraki if realizes that yeah there's absolutely no point in trying to fight Azuku. In terms of in terms of the mountain training arc now, the very first thing that will happen is on the bus. The kids will be talking to Azuku, wondering how strong he is, how could he just fight All Might like that? Because, well, All Might is the number one hero. Azuku is still literally a first year in UA. We're crying out loud, how is he so strong? What kind of protein was his parents feeding him throughout his childhood? What kind of good meals was he having? What kind of quirk does he have? We're crying out loud, he has a dragon quirk like Ryukyu's, but not even she is that strong to be able to face All Might. And Izuku, he's just shrugging. He's like, I, 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 I. But before he could even really say a word, a proper sentence, I mean, I saw him stop the bus and says for everybody to get out. Everybody listens to Aizawa and they leave the bus only to find out that they've been duped because they thought they would be out. They thought they would be at the lodge. They thought they would be, they thought they would be having a good summer, but no. What ends up happening instead is that um, Pixie Bob shows up and immediately makes his mountain beasts. After she introduces herself in a very weird, creepy way, <laughs> um, but on top of that, what ends up happening as well is um. Everybody would try and rush back to the bus, but of course, she's not having that with these mountain beasts. And I saw it already drove off as well, <laughs> like a savage. Izuku would just look at this and transform into his full on dragon form and just make a mouth cannon. Just blasting these things to smithereens because he's not even about to deal with that today. <laughs> yeah, even Izuku is even Izuku has just reached his patience level. He's not about to deal with that today. He's not about to fight dirt for crying out loud. He wants a real fight. Give him a real fight. That's what he's interested in. He's al he already knows that these things are gonna really crumble. Very very easily they're not gonna give him give him a proper fight so there's no point in really trying to fight them the next thing that happens is that pixie bob would look in amazement and it's like how as i was just shrugs and it's like azuku was just built different <laughs> like, i don't know what's up with this kid but he's just built different exactly Pixie Bob just sighs, Mandalay sighs as well. Of course, when they reach the when they reach the top, 
a good amount of UA students are exhausted from the walk up, but Izuku is just feeling peppy still. Because this is just like a form of training for Izuku. Uh, just a bit of a cardio session for him. He's dealt with much worse before. I, I mean, come on already. Um, Iz Izuku would try and introduce himself to Koda. The boy would try to punch him. Although, it just does not work. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it hurts it hurts him more than it hurts Izuku. Izuku barely felt it, really. I mean, like, that's probably one of his most vulnerable spots. But even then, it still doesn't harm Izuku that much. He doesn't really feel that much pain from it. So he just shrugs it off. While Koda, he... Koda Kota. Well, anyways, he just doesn't. He just grabs his fist in pain, honestly, because he was not expecting Azuku to be that strong, even down there. Ah ha ha ha! Yeah, that's all I got. Pretty much most of the things stay similar to in canon, except for the fact that Izuku is the only one to show improvements here. He would say, he would have Izuku walk up to, walk up to the front, no, Azawa, Azawa would have Izuku walk, them, walk up to the front the very next day after these guys had their time to relax, and Aizawa would mention that their quirks really didn't improve that much. Well. They've gained, they've gained techniques, but the overall strength of the quigs, that's remained pretty stagnant. Azuku throws the ball, and he has an, a score of infinity. Aizawa uses Bakugo, Bakugo next because, well, you can't really beat infinity. And when Bakugo thro throws the ball. And uses his explosion quake to have that extra push. All I have to say is that it's it's pretty lackluster. Who am I kidding? It's pretty lackluster. I would say that he just has about 50 meters extra in this cannon. I saw it is actually kind of impressed with Bakugo, but it but he admits that well. Although it is still pretty good, that's a pretty good improvement in the strength of your quirk. At the same time, it could be better, much better, because that's only like a, a 50 meter increase from before. Everybody looks on in amazement at the fact that Bakugo didn't have a higher score as well. And as I mentioned, that this training is going to be intense. This training is going to be is going to make you almost regret joining UA in the hero course. Makes you want to regret going the the hero line because it's just going to be so so intense. And as I as I was not like. Azawa was not lying, my goodness, when you look at the fights, when you look at them trying to stuff food in their mouth, trying to be able to use their quirks more effectively, trying to increase the strength of their quirks here, it's, it almost makes you want to cry. Because they're literally force feeding themselves, force, or forcing themselves to go above and beyond, plus ultra. Ridiculous amounts of plus ultra. Even, even, even the Zuku for crying out loud when it came on to how he had to train. He had to train by, by lifting boulders up and down the mountains. He had to be hurling boulders. He had to. He had to be he had to be throwing boulders, he had to be hurling boulders, he had to be going in and out of his transformations 
we had to go through these transformations rapidly for crying out loud and these transformations take a good deal of energy in order to actually go into and he's just increasing the speed of his transformations the whole time what do I mean by increase increasing the the process for him to get into the transformations because it takes a good couple of seconds in order to get into the transformation in the first place hey but Azuku does manage so that's the most impressive part of it all Azuku does manage throughout everything they applaud Azuku for that but come on Azuku would be training on cooking as well Everybody is learning to cook here. Like, um, this is something that Bakugo is actually ahead of against Azuku. And this is some. This is the category that Bakugo actually actually wins here. He is a much better. He's a much better cook than Azuku is. Better than Azuku could ever be, really. And Azuku is actually kind of jealous of Bakugo because of that. They are making curry, but because of Azuku's stature, he needs to make much more curry than, well, anybody else. I mean, he needs a lot more food to fit that frame of his. Um, next thing you know, we have the same situation with Mustard. Everybody is... Everybody is starting to fall asleep you know, because of because of mustard sleeping gas that he's able to produce. On top of that, they also have to deal with fighting the fighting these Nomu, fighting these villains. Izuku is looking for for a quarter here, and he ends up. He does end up finding Koda, thank goodness, but he ends up also finding Muscular. Muscular reveals himself and actually gets pumped up because he's looking at Izuku and he realizes that, hey, this kid looks kind of strong, maybe he can give me a good fight. And of course Izuku can. Izuku is also getting pumped because he's thinking the same thing but also at the same time. He's looking over the Koda and basically shoes him away, has him leave their premises. Azuka gets into a fighting stance and Muscular starts to activate his muscle fiber quirk, basically increasing his muscle mass to the point where it's just bursting out of his skin. These muscle fibers and he's even using them to really mitigate the damage as well. Azuku wouldn't try and fight Muscular. Muscular would try and fight Azuku. Muscular is not as strong as Azuku though, especially when he reaches his later transformations. Azuku is staying in his base form the whole time though. Azuku is able to to grab onto Muscular. Azuku is actually much stronger than Muscular really is. Azuku is also much faster, which is surprising. He wasn't expecting for Azuku to be all that fast considering his frame. He was expecting Azuku to be strong, but he was quite bulky. He was quite bulky. So, Muscular always assumed that heroes like that would have been on the slowest side of the spectrum. With the exception being All Might and. Hmm. Being All Might and Endeavor. Most of the heroes, especially the ones that aren't even really heroes yet, they are usually much slower. Um, this is thing. This is where things get things get interesting. Azuku just gets carried away in the fight, and ends up going a bit too far with muscular. He ends up putting too much strength into one of his punches. And this is able to blow Muscular back to the point where he crashes He crashes into the mountain and is left unconscious. Azuku is kind of upset because he wanted more out of the fight. 
Azuku, yeah, of course he's upset. He wanted more out of the fight. He wanted to fight muscular a bit more. He wanted more out of that fight, but unfortunately he couldn't get more out of that fight because muscular wasn't strong enough. He wasn't durable enough to to rival Azuku's strength. And Azuku just shrugs and looks for Cody to make sure that he's safe. Cody just watches an author, looking at the whole fight, looking at how easily Azuku was able to subdue Muscular, and he's kind of impressed. He's like, okay, maybe heroes aren't so bad. Maybe this kid, maybe this kid can be my saving grace. Azuku is just relieved to see that Koda is safe, though. In terms of the rest of the fights, they go pretty similar. Except when Izuku ends up finding Moonfish, Tokoyami, Shoji, um, and, and whoever else was there. Probably, I think Bakugo was maybe there? No, I really don't think so. I don't remember everybody who was there at the time. But Izuku is able to uh, get through Moonfish quite easily, quite handily, e quite easily because of the fact that Moonfish's teeth, they can't really pierce his skin. They actually break on contact, which surprises Moonfish. Usually nobody has ever been able to break through his teeth, his extending teeth, his sharp teeth. Usually he's the one that pierces the teeth. Usually he's the one that pierces the flesh. Not that a person is able to break his teeth. And he's just like flesh, flesh, flesh. He is just in this day state. He's he is like um, a death sentence inmate and he wants to just and get rid of Azuku, but Azuku is just too strong for him. And Azuku is able to put an end to Moonfish right then and there. Azuku is able to also uh, get Bakugo, only to find out that no, no, he did not. He actually ends up getting getting the wrong orb instead. This ended up being one of those trick marbles that Mr. Compress had. Mr. Com Mr. Compress still had Bakugo. Azuku didn't know where though. And Mr. Compress just ends up fleeing the scene because of the fact that, well, he does not want to fight Azuku. He has seen what Azuku has done so far. He doesn't want to fight this kid. This kid is a mad lad. This kid is too strong for him to fight right now. Even with his quirk, he doesn't want to get close to Azuku right now. So he flees the scene, he goes through one of the portals, and Azuku is angry. Of course, everybody regroups. They, they end up finding out that Momo did actually have some use here, being able to put a tracking device on one of the Nomu. After they left, um, the heroes, they were planning on rescuing Bakugo. Bakugo is trapped within the league. He's tied. He's tied up. He's still saying that he refuses to join the League of Villains. Absolutely not. There's no way that Bakugo is going to join the scum. But they're trying to convince him otherwise. With the tracking device here, they're able to actually find Bakugo. They just needed to, uh, they just needed to regroup. They needed to make a rescue team. And what's interesting here is that Izuku is actually part of this rescue team here, because of the fact that All Might has a feeling that All for One is back, and. He knows that he has become weaker over the years. Izuku is really strong. Incredibly strong, honestly. And, of course, he wants to make sure that there is absolutely no... There is absolutely no way that All for One will make it out here. 
he wants to make sure that all for one meets his end here and now. So Izuku is part of this rescue squad, part of part of the heroes who are going to basically try and subdue the rest of the League of Villains. Izuku is basically like a backup plan in case that uh, All Might is not strong enough to face All for One. Because that injury really did have an effect on All Might. What's interesting here is, n is nothing. They're able to actually find uh, find the hideout. They're actually able to. They're actually able to subdue quite a bit of the villains, but the main villains that weren't subdued yet, the ones that were still on the loose, were of course Shigaraki, Kirigiri, um, well, Kirigiri, Kuriguri was actually knocked unconscious. But when it came on to people like. Like Toga and Dobby as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, those guys are still on the loose. You know, those guys were able to break free thanks to Thanks to All for One. Even even Baku was taken out by taken out by All for One using that weird teleportation quirk of his. And he was able to bring people near him. <clears throat> he was able to bring them all near to him. All for one, all for one finds that All Might is actually much slower here. He even acknowledges that. He says that it took you like, it took you way too long to actually make it here. What's up with that? It seems that you've gotten weaker, All Might. And he drops the biggest bombshell of most of the story up until that point. Shigaraki is actually Tanko Shimura, Nanu Shimura's um, grandson. This affects the whole fight going onwards. He's like, H but how? How is this possible? You lie. Um, this whole time, Bakugo, not Bakugo, but all Might is being clouded by his judgment here. He he keeps on getting distracted and Izuku realizes this. This is when Izuku jumps in when uh, uh, when All for One is just about to kill All Might here. Izuku actually jumps in the way and punches All for One in right square in the face, he just sucker punches all for one, and he rams, and he rams him with his horns as well, piercing through him. <sighs> all for one coughs up some blood and looks at Izuku. He he realizes just how just how close Izuku is to him, and tries to steal Izuku's quake. Well, at least he thinks it's a quake. Only for it to not work because for some reason it just isn't. All for one is confused. Why is this not working? Is this like not a quirk or something? If it's not a quirk, then what exactly is it? All for one is angry here and so he tries to fight Zuku. He goes to the point of using that those stocked up quirks of his. And I'm going to play some music for this. Izuku. Izuku tries to fight to All for One. All for One tries to fight Izuku. Izuku goes in at All for One. All for One goes in at Izuku. All for One punches Izuku right square in the face with those stocked up quirks of his all in one arm. But Izuku is just too strong for All for One. Izuku tanks a hit and punches All for One back. He punches All for One back. All for One is sent flying back. Azuku goes after All for One. Azuku is able to punch All for One repeatedly. 
Azuku kicks Alpha One in the back, sending Alpha One flying up into the sky. Azuku jumps into the sky as well. He goes into his half dragon transformation as well. He punches Alpha One back into the ground. And Alpha One is being is, is being thrown like a rag doll here. Alpha One is wondering how strong is this kid. Alpha One tries to fight Azuku, but he's just not quick enough. He's not quick enough to even get a good grasp. The moment when he's able to actually stand up, Azuku is right behind him and kicks him. All one is losing it. How is this kid that strong? Now, what is this kid? Is this like some sort of secret, you know, some sort of secret love child of All Might? Was this like a clone of All Might? <laughs> what was he? What was Azuku? This is what All one was trying to figure out throughout this whole entire fight. It, the whole fight is being recorded as well, and people are losing it for crying out loud. What is this kid? Who is this kid? This kid is stronger than All Might? It, and this is what Alt One and everybody is trying to figure out. All Might is just in the background trying to get his, you know, trying to catch his breath, trying to hold on to his transformation as long as possible. But it's just not working. He can't stay in a transformation, and he ends up being forced into a skinny form. Izuku is just way stronger than All Might. He's stronger than All For One. He is the strongest one here. He is the strongest one to live. He is the strongest beast. He is the strongest creature of all time. Izuku uh, grabs All For One by the face and just and just shoves him into the ground. He he throws him like a rag doll. Basically imagine the scene with the Hulk versus Loki. Azuku is just battering off one into the ground. Azuku is just is just angry here. He's angry because of the fact that all for one basically was was the root cause behind why All Might is so injured right now. Why why All Might is just so weak. Why why there's just been so much pain throughout these years. Well, before All Might that is. Not only that, but for but he's also angry because of. Uh, because of Bakugo. He's angry because he basically kidnapped Bakugo and he was not about to let that slide. So he's giving him he's giving him hell right now. Izuku um, punches all for one again and again and again. And all for one is just spitting blood at this point. He's coughing up blood. He's he's lost all of it. He is, he can just feel his consciousness slipping right now. All for one tries to make a getaway. He tries everything. He tries to put every single quirk that he, that he stocked up on over the years right into his arsenal. And that he has in, every quirk that he has in his arsenal, he's using at this very moment. These, in order to actually fight Izuku. And... They're enough to pierce Azuku's skin. They're enough to actually injure Azuku. But Azuku, Azuku just ends up going into his next transformation. Azuku goes into his. Azuku goes in. Azuku! He goes into his half dragon transformation. He goes into his half trans. His half dragon transformation. And continues to fight Ulf One. Azuku was bleeding here. He. He was injured by that attack, and that's one of the few times that he's ever been injured. And he hates the feeling of it for some reason. He hates and loves it at the same time. He's enjoying this fight, but he's angry at the same time. This is one of the few fights where he is just willing to let everything out. And he goes into his full on tr dragon transformation at the end as well. Alf One is very fearful. He's trying to run away from Azuku because there is a literal dragon, a literal serpentine dragon chasing him right now. And Alf One can't steal his quirk, so he doesn't know what to do here. Azuku is going after the villain. He's going after Alf One. Alf One is like a lost kid at this point. Alf One 
has lost his fight completely. He feels complete shame in having to run away from a mere child. But Azuku is no mere, no mere child. He is a reincarnation of Kaido. Kaido of the Beast Pirates. Kaido the strongest creature. So of course, everything is just an L for all for one. Ah. Um, Azuku is able to get off one in close proximity and shoots a mouth cannon at all for one. He shoots plasma at all for one with so much intensity of heat that it's enough to obliterate all for one. Everybody just looks not in amazement, including All Might. He never expected for Azuku of all people to ever be able to just end off one like that. And yeah. That's how it basically ends. Azuku is praised but he's also looked down upon by some of the government officials because he did technically break the laws. And where he did kill someone. It wasn't the fact that he used his quirk here. It because of the fact that he was given special permission here to use his quirk. But what's what really upset them was the fact that Zuku used his quirk to kill someone, even if it was a villain. <sighs> even if it was a villain, he still killed someone. That was against the law. So Azuku was being testified against here because of that but Azuku did actually win the case after the court case was finished after after the judge ruled that Azuku was innocent um Azuku was praised he was given a whole on provisional license well he was given a full on hero license in order to use his quirk more and he actually was able to well continue his studies at UA it's just that he was able to well do much more here he was able to also go up against Chisaki as well Chisaki well I'm just for simplicity's sake yeah no um the League of Villains was disbanded after the death of all for one and with Chisaki, um, even then, Chisaki had absolutely no chance against Azuku because Azuku, he was just much faster than uh, than Chisaki was. He was much faster than Overhaul, and just immediately, he just immediately um one shot him. He just pimp slapped him into the atmosphere, with Muriel just looking on, and it's like. Okay. Azuku takes Azuku takes Eri and they leave. They leave the whole premises. They're able to bring her back to the UA campus where she would be able to have a semi normal life. A, well, at the very least, a much better life than she had with with being in the Within the grasp of overhaul, within within the eight precepts of death, within the whole mafia for crying out loud, within the whole yakuza, she would have a much better life, and Zuku would would continue to improve until he would graduate from UA and become the next number one hero. So yeah. That's how I'm going to end off this what if. That is the finale of this what if, guys. My goodness, my throat hurts. <laughs> but yeah, that's a lot to say for right now. Um, King Titan X, out. Oh, and before I forget, um, remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe because we're trying to reach like a thousand subscribers before the end of the year. Yeah, that's all.